When it comes to assembling casework or cabinets, few tools are as handy as corner clamps, and today we're going to build our own. So this design of corner clamps is a reiteration of a design I put up a couple years ago. What's nice about these is the wedges that you use to clamp the boards in position stay right on the clamp so you never lose them. And this one is adjustable. By loosening the knob and moving the plate forward or backwards, you can adjust this to accommodate for materials from 5 eighths of an inch all the way up to inch and a half. The quarter clamps are really simple to use. Simply line up the boards. And with these ones, you just push the wedge forward. Just some hand pressure is enough to lock it in place. Put another clamp on the top and you're good to go. Now whenever I'm starting any project, I always stop to make sure my saws are all nice and square. And that little magnet square makes it super easy. It's a great little piece of kit to have around in the shop. When I'm done with that, I'll start by ripping out all the pieces I need of plywood out of some scrap plywood I had laying around in the shop and then cutting them down to their final dimension. Everything on this build is cut at an eight degree angle for the wedges, which makes it pretty easy. And with the plywood cut, I just rough out a couple pieces of hardwood that I'm gonna use for the wedge guides and the wedges themselves. And then I pulled some dimensions off the plans I made for this, and I'm laying out a template that's for all the drill positions on both the base plate and the adjustment plate. Now because these holes need to be lined up really well to keep everything at a 90 degree angle, having a template is just a great way to go. And rather than clamping it, I'm just going to go ahead and screw it onto the base plate and to the adjustment plate because I'm going to be on the drill press and I don't really want to mess around with it. Now after that was done, I went over to the drill press and I set my drill bit to a depth so it wouldn't quite penetrate through the base plate and cut the four holes on each side. And then I switched to a standard bit and drilled the one hole that goes all the way through the base plate. Now with that done, I put the next bit in and drilled the rest of the holes in the top adjustment plate. All using that template, which made everything line up really nice. Now this part really isn't necessary, but I went through and I chamfered each one of the holes just to make it a little bit easier later in the build. With my plates done, I turned my attention towards the knobs and I made some squares that were two and a quarter by two and a quarter rather than making mine round. And then I set this jig up on the drill press and just cut each corner out with the one and three eighths drill bit after I drilled a center hole for the bolt. That just gives it a little place to put your fingers to get a little more torque on it. With the knobs all cut, I put the bolts in and I just used some 2P10 CA gel and then drove the bolts in the rest of the way and a little bit of activator to make the glue dry really fast. With the knobs done, I went over to my scroll saw and cut out a slot in the top adjustment plates. And this is just going to allow the bolt to slide back and forth in there. And with each one I cut, I stopped to check to make sure the bolt would move freely through it. Next I cut some one inch dowels and I turned the adjustment plates upside down, glued those in place and hammered them down so they would be flush with the top of the adjustment plates, leaving the dowel a one quarter inch proud. And those will line up with some holes that are in the base plate and keep everything nice and square. Next I needed to run some threads in the center hole on the base plate. And you can do that with just a bolt and a drill I have a tap and I use that typically most of the time and that makes for a really easy job. And after I thread it, I'll come back with some CA, uh, thin CA glue and spray it with a little activator that makes it hard real quick and then come back and recut the threads. And that just gives those threads a little extra strength. Now when I'm assembling my cabinets, I wanna be able to see where I'm lining things up. So I'm cutting a little corner out of the base plate. 
and I'm just using my adjustment plate with the ruler to mark it out and then I cut them out on the bandsaw. And threw a little finish on it. I painted the knobs orange and sprayed everything else with a coat of spray lacquer. With the other parts drying, I turned my attention towards cutting the wedge guides and the wedges themselves. Now that hardwood I cut earlier is what I'm using and I laid everything out at 8 degrees and set up a little stop so all my wedge guides would be the same size. Now you can do this on the table saw as well. I'm using the chop box because it's easy. I will say you never ever want to get your fingers that close to the blade. You can see there I'm using my $10 stick to hold everything in place. And there's no way I would have tried it without having something to hold it. When that was done I cut the wedges and I just did that by moving the saw back and forth between 8 degrees and 90 degrees and cutting each wedge individually. And point in fact I'm cutting them the wrong size right there, I have to go back and fix it. When those were cut I went over to the plans and I marked out some hole positions on my wedge guide blocks. And rather than marking each one of them, I just set up a little fence on my drill press and marked a forward position and a back position so I could just line each one up and drill the holes that I needed to drill. And then I took the wedge guides over to the scroll saw and marked it out so I need to cut a slot along these for some screws to slide back and forth later and that's what holds the wedges in place. Now you can do this with a router or with even a small blade in a jigsaw would work well if you could clamp those blocks. The next step was just to glue these blocks onto the base plate making sure they were in the right orientation with the long part facing towards the cutout. And again, I'm using my 2P10CA gel hardener. I just I love it because it's fast. And because this is hardwood and I'm worried about it splitting, I went back and ran a countersink in and some screws in each position. Now these countersinks I'm using are from a small family-owned shop in Texas. They're called Snappy Tools. And I will tell you right now, these are the best countersinks and drill accessories I've ever used. So with that done, I put one in place and threw a wedge in there, and that's when I realized I'd cut the wedges the wrong size, which is really no big deal. I just went back over to the saw, made some slight adjustments, and recut the wedges. And of course, I'm going to test it before I go any further to make sure these wedges were the right size, and then I cut the rest of them. Now to install the wedges is pretty easy. You put a piece of 3 quarter inch in, push the wedge in nice and tight, drill a hole in the center of your slot, and then one towards the back of the clamp. Just I put two in to help with the uh, stability, I suppose, of the wedge. And then I just adjusted the screws for a, a good tightness, and that was it. Installed the knob, and these clamps are ready to go. And of course I'm going to test it immediately. And these clamps work awesome. Now here's one of the new one and the old ones that I made before. And then I made the other three and tested them out. I'm really excited about having these done. I have a bookcase build coming up that folds open into a kid's crafting table. So these will come in really handy for that. I'd like to thank FastCap for showing their love and supporting today's video and supporting free online woodworking content. I'd also like to do a quick shout out to Snappy Tools. As always, there's links in the description box below to products that I used in this video. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, I invite you to do so. You never know what's going to happen next. It's always something crazy, fun, or useful. Thanks for watching.